Today is the second Sunday after Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. We'll be here in San Angelo and in the middle of uh, tumbleweeds in Texas, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the epistle for this um, Good Shepherd Sunday is taken from the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 2. Dearly beloved, Christ suffered for us, leaving you an example. They should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who knew was reviled, did not revile. When he suffered, he threatened not, but delivered himself to him that judged him unjustly. Who his own self bore our sins in his body upon the tree. That we being dead to sin should live to justice, by whose stripes you were healed. For you are as a sheep going astray, but you are now converted to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Let's just come in the gospel. Take that according to St. John chapter 10. At that time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep, but the hireling, and he that is not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leave the sheep and flieth, and the wolf catcheth and scattereth the sheep. And the hiring flieth, because he is a hireling, and he hath no care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. As the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. Other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall bear my vo hear my voice. And there should be one fold and one shepherd. That's what we're with today's Holy Gospel. In the Father, Son, and Ghost, Amen. In olden times, the first day of the church year used to be considered Septuagesim of Sunday. Now, 70 days before last, to be 77 days ago, that was the beginning of the liturgical year. And the very first words of the liturgical year were, Chirgum de Dei, Jamitus, Chirgum de Derome, Jamitus Martis. That there surrounded me the tears of death. First words. And then, the sorrows of hell have encompassed me. These are the first words of the liturgical year. In the olden days, before they changed liturgical year being the first day, the first Sunday of Advent, and originally it was Septuagesima, that when a child is born, he is he comes he's born into a world in which it is a world in which when we come out of the womb of our mothers, what do we find? Chirgum de Derome Jamitus Martis. The tears of death have surrounded me. That's the first thing we discover. Because God did not create man to die. But well, what happened? Adam decided to change that. Adam changed that by eating the forbidden fruit. And he brought death into the world. Eve assisted, of course. She assisted by, by encouraging Adam to eat that fruit. And, and, and getting Adam to eat the fruit. But had Eve only eaten the fruit, death would not have entered the world. There would not be tears of death in the world. Eve would have had to make some penance for her eating of that fruit and, and then gone to heaven as a penitent because Eve is now in heaven. But Adam alone committed the original sin. Adam alone committed the sin that made it possible for the tears of death to enter the world so that every single human being is born and is going to die. And that's the first absolute infallible certitude. We are all going to die. And so the church says, there the child comes in the world. Does he come into a world peacefully? Does he come into the world without troubles? No, he comes into the world that is bullets flying everywhere. He comes into a world with danger set on every side. He comes into a world that is a most deadly place. And every single child is going to die. And hence the first words that we open our eyes coming out of the mother's womb and going out into the, into the world the day of birth, Circum de Dero me Jamitus Martis, et dolosa inferni surrounded me, and the sorrows of hell have surrounded me, encompassed me. 
and the sorrows of hell have encompassed me. That's the world we're in. This world is caused because Adam decided to commit the sin of pride, because Adam decided to turn away from God, and therefore he had all his children born unto death. And hence it says in the sacred scripture, it is given for all men to die, and after death, the judgment. That's what we all have to face. And so therefore, what is necessary? A man calls the trouble. A man must fix the trouble. There is a situation in which a man brought evil into the world. Eve helped man bring evil into the world, but man is the one who brought evil into the world. He is the one who made it pass down generation to generation. Hence, it will be one of his sons who shall shed his blood. And the true physical son of, uh, of Adam is our Lord Jesus Christ. Like him in all things save sin. And he will have to shed his blood in order to wipe away the trouble of sin. But what is necessary in our world since that day? We know that in order to go to heaven, you must believe the truth. In order to go to heaven, you have to stand in the right order. There is God at the top, and there's a pope, and there's a bishop, and there's priests, and there's deacons. And then there's the remainder of the clergy, and then there's the faithful. And there is a hierarchy in the church, and it's a very beautiful thing. There's the head of the mystical body, our Lord Jesus Christ, the invisible head. Then there's the pope, the visible head. There's a nice structure. There's, a, there's seven sacraments. There are teachings that we have. But do we have these teachings in a calm sea? Does our boat, the boat of our church, exist in a calm sea? Or is these, are these teachings given to souls who sit in a nice classroom where there's nice desks and they have all the notes they need and there's no distractions? No, this doesn't exist. The world like that doesn't exist. The world in which we live is a world in which there are, are storm, stormy seas trying to sink the boat of our faith. And the world in which we live is one in which the whole of our faith is trying to be destroyed. And hence it is most necessary that a teacher not just teach. There cannot be just teachers. And St. Saint, Saint Leo the Great talked about it yesterday. This contemplation just happened to be the time of the... Um, of the great litanies of St. Mar of, uh, Saint, uh, of Mark, we go out and bless the field. And we say on that day that God, God, God said to, to he sent his disciples out two by two. And St. Leo says, if it wasn't for Adam's sin, maybe we wouldn't need to go out two by two. But we must go out two by two. And why is that? The disciples must go out two by two. This does not mean that there will always be one priest with another priest when they go out on the missions. The Lord, Lord did send his disciples, two disciples, two disciples, two disciples. But every disciple must go two by two. He cannot go one by one. He must go two by two. Because it is one thing to teach. It is one thing to instruct. It is one thing to give order as to what must be done, because the captain of the ship says this is what must be done. Here is how we get the ship from the port to the to the from uh, across the sea to the to our heavenly port. He must give instructions. He must teach, but he must go two by two. That is, he must not only teach, but he must also act. He must not only teach, but he must also defend. That is why when a man who was ordained a priest. He was ordained a priest. When I was ordained a priest, ordained a priest, I was consecrated, but I have not the fullness of the priesthood. I have the ability to make Christ present on the altar. That's the most important thing, to make Jesus Christ present on the altar. But when is priest fully priest? It is not enough that he makes Christ present on the altar. Also the power to step over to the pulpit and preach the word of Christ to souls. And tell the souls about Christ. But that is not enough to make Christ make souls go to Christ. Why? Because we are in a great war in which one teaching and one sacrifice of one man is not sufficient. It must be two by two. Hence, says St. Leo the Great, our Lord Jesus Christ did not just become man. He did not just teach a sermon on the mount. He did not just die on the cross for our sins. But he gave us an example, and he taught us how to follow him. And he did not waste his time, says St. Says Leo. He didn't waste his time between the day of the resurrection and the day of the ascension. He didn't have 40 days of celebrations of the victory. 
He didn't have that. He was busy teaching his apostles. And what was he teaching them? You ordained priests and Good Friday. Now I'm going to make you bishops. Now I'm going to make you pastors of souls. And what is going to make you a bishop? A bishop is one who has no fear. For when we see the day of the ascension, the day of the resurrection, our Lord Jesus Christ, what happened on the morning of that day? He rose from the dead, and there were women there. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, but the apostles did not come because they were afraid. They were locked up in the upper room. Later on, two apostles, St. Peter and St. John, ran to the tomb, and they saw Christ. And they were very happy that they saw Christ. They then went back to the upper room. What did they do? They locked the door. They locked themselves in the upper room. They were very happy, but they were not very secure. They still had fear. And hence Christ had to appear to them and appear to them over these next 40 days to teach them not to have fear. Two of the disciples, priests of God, what were they doing? Walking away from Jerusalem. Therefore he became the third one amongst them, and he spoke to them about his passion. I have taught you about my passion. You have seen my passion. You have seen me fight the devil. You have seen me defeat hell. Now what must happen? You must go back to Jerusalem. You must return to Jerusalem, where the first martyr of the apostles will be martyred, where St. James will be martyred. The first one to be martyred will be martyred in Jerusalem. You're going to have to go back to Jerusalem. That's where you're going to die. It is necessary to conquer fear. What is this, the, the, the apostle? When we are born, we are born in a war. In our church, there is a war. And this war is one that St. Paul says is had against principalities and powers of the lords of this darkness. So many are ordained priests. How many become bishops? Our Lord Jesus Christ says that you are converted to the, to the, I mean, St. Paul says, you're converted to the bishop of your souls. There are many that have ordination. It takes a few minutes to put hands on someone's head. It doesn't take very long at all. But what makes a bishop? It says uh, that the, um, what is it that makes a bishop? It says St. Peter, the apostle, telling what, us, what a bishop is. We read in the epistle today. Who is an own self, who in his own self bore our sins in his body upon the tree. Once a bishop. St. Peter talks about it. Dearly beloved, Christ suffered for us, leaving you an example that you should follow his steps. Speaking here to this in an encyclical of the first pope to the bishops of the world. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, he did not revile. When he suffered, he threatened not. Who delivered himself to him that judged him unjustly, who in his own self bore our sins in his own body upon the tree, that we being dead to sin should live to justice, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were a sheep going astray, but you are now converted to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. The bishop is the bishop of souls. He does not respond as other men respond, so that each man, any man can be ordained a priest and be able to offer the sacrifice. But when does he become bishop? When does he become the bishop of souls? When one is consecrated a bishop, he is given a pointed hat. Those are two horns that he wears. And when he's putting on these two horns, what are the purpose of these two horns? Receive the horns of the two testaments. When we're ordained priests, we learn how to preach the two testaments. But when we become bishops, there better be two points. And those who follow not these testaments, let them feel the point. They are going to get horns. Horns are put upon the head of the bishop. And he received these two horns. Receive the horns of the two testaments. And may you, be, may you appear fearsome to the enemies of the truth. Now there are two kinds of enemies of the truth. There are those who do not believe the truth. And these are enemies of the truth. And there are those that believe the truth, but do not follow it. And these are also enemies of the truth. And the Old Testament gives us the teaching, and the New Testament gives us the example. 
so that we put the truth into practice. And there must be bishops. Bishops are not supposed to be cowards. Why is it that Vatican II happened? When Archie de Lefebvre was in the council, there were 250 bishops. About 250 bishops had said, we don't want to go along with this modernism. Right now, for instance, we're terrified of this coronavirus. I've been on a search, I'm really tired. I'm not tired because it's midnight. I'm tired because I've been searching the whole state country looking for the virus. I've been in the Northwest, I've been in the Southwest, I've been in the Northeast, I've been all, all around, I'm looking for the virus. I can't find it. Can't find the snake and virus. I asked Sasquatch where the virus was. He told me he can't find it. I went to the Northeast, the hospitals are empty, and they tell you here that they're full. It's all lies. And what is the virus? The virus is a Satan indwelling inside of our souls. That's the virus. And what is the reverend evil in the church? Bishops. Bishops who are not doing their duty as bishops. As Bishop Williamson used to tell us when we were in the seminary, he said the trouble of the modern bishops is not that they're bad bishops, it's that they don't bish. Bishops have to bish, and they're not bishing. They're not using their Episcopal power. The Pope's not poping. He has three crowns on his head. He gave them the United Nations. He doesn't believe in the three crowns and the three powers that he has, but he still has those powers. And bishops still have those two horns, and there is nothing that can remove those horns from their head. But they can only choose not to use them. And he has a staff. The round part of that staff is to pull the sheep out of the pit. And the rest of it is to whack the bad guys. Now the fact is that there is a bishop. He is he he has a soldier. He has a captain in an army. And what is his what is he captaining? Why does he fight? Why does a bishop use horns? Why does a bishop have a staff? Why so? Because he loves his sheep. He is the one that loves his sheep. And when his sheep are told you can't go to mass, what is a bishop supposed to do? These doors of that church shall be opened. Now, we're all against Vatican II and the New Mass. The Vatican II, it's a very good thing that Pope Francis canceled the New Mass. Tell him to keep canceling it forever. Good choice. One of the few good things he did. But it's a very bad thing that Pope Francis closed the door of the Vatican. He closed the door of the churches. And he said that Mother Earth is unhappy because of global warming. And that's why we got a virus. He didn't check the scientists to tell you that viruses are out when it's global cooling. When it's global warming, that kills the virus. If you want to kill the virus, then melt more ice in the, in, in, in the North Pole. That'll cure all the viruses. The guy's an idiot in his spare time. But the fact is, what are we here to do? We are here to conquer Satan. And we all want to conquer him. But what is needed? What is needed is a bishop of souls. Where is the bishop of souls? And I'm looking for the bishop of souls, that there must be a bishop of souls. And this is the challenge of our times. There is no bishop of souls. Why is it Archbishop Lefebvre, he tried to gather together 250 bishops. Imagine his 250 bishops said, we are not going to go along with this garbage of the council. The council would not have preached heresy. But it did, because the bishops wouldn't stand up. And then after the council and they realized how bad it was we were going to stand to the right thing but the bishops didn't stand up and finally only one bishop stood up only one and he stood up in the whole world to know oh, i'm going to be a bishop of souls and he went to souls everywhere in the world in order to bring the holy roman catholic faith in order to save souls from hell it's the bishop that is needed and our Lord, and God, God, our Lord God said in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, he said, there is a problem of you bishops. I made you all shepherds. These are shepherds of the Old Testament. It also applies to shepherds of the New Testament. And you have not done your duty. You're not shepherds. Now, why is it they are failures of shepherds? And here Christ is not condemning the wicked shepherds who are already condemned. These are the infiltrators of the church. He's not talking about them. There's always going to be infiltrated in the church. He's not talking about Judas Iscariot, who already sold Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Judas can cause no harm, 
The wicked bishops can cause no harm. Why is it that the church is in such a terrible state today? Because of the good bishops. The good bishops that are hirelings. The good bishops that are all conservative. The good bishops that want to be good. As long as they can keep their hat. As long as they can keep their hat on their head. As long as they cannot lose their positions. As long as they're sufficiently comfortable. But what did our Lord St. Peter say that a bishop is? He suffered stripes. He didn't worry about not suffering stripes. He suffered stripes so that his sheep might be healed. And we must pray to the church, pray to God, pray to the Holy Ghost, that he send true shepherds into his flock. We need shepherds, the bishops of souls, who are not, follow, not following fear, but who have great confidence in God and his holy faith. And then here we see that the hireling, the good shepherd, giveth his life for his sheep. But the hireling, and he that is not a shepherd, so there are two kinds, the hireling and he that is not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not. These are all these characteristics. The hireling, he works only for money. He that is not a shepherd, he's not a shepherd. And whose own the sheep are not. They're not my sheep. So there's a shepherd in which, that's not my sheep. There's a shepherd who's, who's not really a shepherd, he's just working for money. And there's a man who's just not a shepherd. All these, these do not save the sheep. What's the good shepherd? He giveth his life for his sheep. He's, whereas, whereas the hireling and he that is not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and flieth, and the wolf catcheth and scattereth the sheep. And the hireling flieth because he is a hireling. This is a very important word of the Holy Ghost. The hireling flieth because he is a hireling. He doesn't fly because he was put under pressure. He doesn't fly because they told him that he, he put a gun to his head and said, if you don't follow Vatican II, I'm going to throw you in the streets. If you don't follow heresy, I'm going to throw you in the streets. If you don't burn incense to the idol, I'm going to throw you in the streets. I'm going to execute you. Those are reasons you might fail. They're not the reasons given by Christ. He says the shepherd fails because he has a hireling. One example of this, we end up getting the name of the book, German Franciscan in World War II. He was, uh, he, was a, he was not yet a priest. He was only a seminarian. And there was a bit of soldiers, Germans were losing the war, and there are many people dying. And he sees an old Italian bishop. He said he, he, he was a... He was a was made to join the German army, and he had to be in the German. He fought the entire war. He was given permission by a bishop, the one we mentioned today, to be able to give out Holy Communion to the dying. And he said he only pulled out a gun twice in the war. Once on a bishop, once on a priest. He never pulled out the gun against any American or any Englishman or anyone of the enemy. He was in war continuously, but he only pulled out a gun twice. And the one time was today when he went to a bishop. And he said, there's all kinds of our soldiers dying there. It's Italian soldiers, German soldiers, they're lying dead. And they need a priest to give them anointing. And he said, well, look, you know, I'm not going to take care of that. And he saw this old bishop. And he was a happy bishop. And he was a gentle bishop. And he was a nice bishop. This is a nice man. This is a good bishop. And he went to him and said, look, you know, I need you. Right now, our soldiers are dying. And they need anointing. And they need Holy Communion. And he said, look, there's a battle going on. I'm not going to go down there when there's a battle going on. Hmm. He said, you better do something. You're a bishop. He said, no, I, I, I wait till the battle's over. Wait till they're all dead. I can't do anything while the battle's going on. So he pulled out a gun. He put it in the bishop's head. He said, you're going to do something right now. Hmm. He said, you know what? And then he said in the paper, he said, I give you permission to give Holy Communion. He gave him a paper to give Holy Communion. But he would not go down and anoint the, 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 the dying himself. He gave a paper to the German Franciscan. And he was able to bring Holy Communion to the dying, give them a Vaticum. And that bishop was a nice bishop, but he wasn't going to go into battle. And what is what the, he was not a heretic, he was a pre-Vatican II bishop. And he was probably still alive when the council came. And all these bishops, nice bishops, well, the nice bishops don't save souls. Nice bishops flee when there are troubles. 
We need bishops that are not. But why do they flee? Because they are hirelings. They don't flee because of the pressure of the battle. They don't flee because of the guns. They flee because they are hirelings. And there is, and so that we find that the, 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 the so many sheep are ripped away from the flock, and so many sheep are damned because shepherds are hirelings, and because shepherds are afraid of discomfort, and shepherds are afraid of losing what they might have. And therefore, why is it? Because they became sheep, they became shepherds because they liked the, the position of shepherd. They became shepherd because it's a job. And many people, many men become priests because it's like a job. And the priesthood is not a job. It is a life of going to the cross. For what purpose? To save the sheep. And now we find throughout the entire world what's happened. So many shepherds. So many shepherds. They have said, well, it's not safe to worship Jesus Christ. It's not safe to adore him. You must keep a social distance. And so the shepherds were the first ones to close the doors. They were the first ones to hide. When the superior decides he finds the tent, Father Wagner wrote, in, wrote into his paper, there will be no sick calls. We will take holy waters out of the holy water font. Why are we going to do that? Because after all, it's not safe. The last thing you want to do when you're dirty is take a bath. You don't want everyone to use water. And so the, what has happened? We're not going to use holy water. It's what drives away the devil. We're going to close the churches before they command us to close the churches. This is not of God. Well, the shepherd must take care of the sheep. The shepherd must go where the sheep are. And this is one of the challenges of today. And why is it that the priests are so weak and the people are so weak? Because there are not shepherds. We must pray to God to send us bishops. Bishops who have the faith. But bishops who are not hirelings. And bishops who are going to, 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 uh, uh, to uh, give up their life for their sheep. And this is the Today of Good Shepherd Sunday. And we pray that God send us good shepherds who will not be as hirelings and be, remain faithful shepherds of Christ. Usque ad martem, all the way until death and into the death of the cross. It goes into this wall, into the Father, into the Holy Ghost. Amen.